All right, so now we're going to look at a theorem, right? Um, so the definition of increasing and decreasing doesn't depend on any, any additional properties of a function, right? The function is not necessarily continuous, not necessarily differentiable. But suppose now that our function is continuous and differentiable on, on this interval, right? And we want to know about increasing and decreasing. Well, it turns out that you can look at the derivative for this, right? Um, so if the derivative is positive for all c between a and b, then f is increasing on a, b. And, and some people will, will worry about whether we should do the closed interval or the open interval here. Um, it honestly doesn't really matter. Um, if you put the open interval, closed interval, um, I think most calculus instructors are willing to mark you right in either case. There are some subtleties at, at the end points, but um, we don't tend to get into them in a first course in calculus. Um, so if the derivative is positive, right, if we have positive slope for the tangent line everywhere, we've got an increasing function. If we have negative slope everywhere, well then f is decreasing on that interval. Okay, and the other one which we already know because we did it in the mean value theorem section. If the derivative is zero, then our function is constant. on our interval. Okay, all right. So this is a, sort of a, a test for increasing or decreasing, right? Um, once we have the derivative, we can, we can look at the derivative and we can tell if our function is increasing or decreasing, right? Um, and this, the, the reason this is valid is, is exactly because of the mean value theorem, right? If I if I have any two points in my interval, right, if I choose any two points, say, A and B in my interval, or maybe x1, x2, right, um, given x1 less than x2, right, I know that f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1, I know that's got to be equal to f prime of c for some c between x1 and x2, okay? And since I'm assuming that x1 is less than x2, I know that this denominator is always positive here, which means that the numerator has the same sign as f prime, right? So if f prime is positive, then f of x2 minus f of x1 is positive, and that means that f of x2 is bigger than f of x1, and we have a decreasing function, or increasing, sorry. Um, if f prime is negative, this is negative, and that means that f of x2 is less than f of x1, and we're dealing with a decreasing function, right? If the derivative is zero, these are equal, we have a constant function. Okay. So it's, it's a simple, straightforward application of the mean value theorem to see that we have this. Um, but now that we have it, we can very quickly and easily figure out where a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. We simply compute the derivative, we figure out where the derivative is positive, where is it negative, um, where is it zero. It's pretty rare that it's gonna be identically zero over an interval. Um, chances are it's just gonna be zero at a single point, and we know exactly what those points are where the derivative is zero. They're critical points, right? So the critical points, uh, right, those are gonna be the points where we see this transition from increasing to decreasing, right? Again, not every critical point is going to give you that transition, we could have you know, like x cubed, where there is a critical point, but it's increasing on either side. Um, but still, uh, this, this gives us some, some idea of what's going on, and we're going to state another theorem in a bit that explains exactly that, that if we want to know at a given critical point whether it's a maximum or a minimum or neither, 
we need to look at the sign of the derivative on either side of that critical point to tell whether we are we going from increasing to decreasing. If we are, must be a max. If we're going from decreasing to increasing, must be a min. Right? It's as simple as that. So we're gonna we're gonna explore those ideas in the next few videos. We're gonna look at some examples, um, and then we're gonna move on to look at what the second derivative tells us about the graph.